الحمد للہ رب العالمین السلاۃ والسلام علی خاتم النبیین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم علم تر کئی فف اللہ رب کبی اصحاب الفیل علم یج القی دہم فی تدلیل و ارسل علیہم تعرن ابابیل ترمی ہم بی ہجا رتم من سجیل فج الحم کا اسفم مقول صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرحلی صدری و یسرلی عمری وحل العقدتم السانی یفقہ قولی وجا علی وزیر من احلی آمین بی رحمتی کا یا رب العالمین سو السلام علیکم ایوری ون ویلکم ٹو کلاس نمبر ایٹ ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ سورہ فیل and as you probably remember we've already talked about the people of the elephant so there'll be a lot of material that we cover today that should seem familiar and the fact that you already know the story will make it easier for you to understand this particular surah i'll start out by talking a little bit about the learning objectives of our class today we want to cultivate the following traits and we want to help all of us understand the following points number one what is the importance of the holy kaaba so that's extremely important we are going to understand that in this lesson also who was abraha and what objectives did he have and again many of these points will be points that hopefully you remember from last time but we will just repeat them and reinforce them and then add some more information then number three how did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect his house which is the kaaba and what are some practical aspects of the events related to this surah so these are the key points and at the end of this lesson just think about whether you understood all these points or not i'm now going to talk about the introduction and the historical background Some surahs and ayat of the Holy Quran were revealed on a particular occasion and for specific reasons. The description of these reasons or circumstances helps us understand the purpose of the revelation of that surah or ayat. This surah is revealed regarding the attack of Abraha on the Holy Kaaba. As we discussed last time in our previous lesson, This incident occurred 50 days before the birth of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Surah Feel mentions the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his house, the Holy Kaaba, and the Quraysh of Mecca with his power by destroying Abraha and his army. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent small birds to Abraha and his army. these birds threw stones at the army and destroyed it so i hope you realize that different surahs of the quran and different ayat have a historical background and to understand the surah it's also important to understand the historical background this particular surah has an important historical background which is the attack by abraha on the kaaba on the people of makka and that happened in the same year when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born and this was such a major event that the people of makka in fact the people of the whole peninsula remembered this event very well so when the surah was revealed and this event was mentioned the people knew exactly what the surah is talking about so this was the historical context but we should also remember that with this surah and other surahs the lessons that we learn also apply to us today so not only is there a historical context and not only was the surah extremely relevant at the time it was revealed but we should remember that what allah is telling us is also important for us and relevant today and we should try and understand what's the relevance to us and towards the end of this lesson we will talk about the lessons that we can learn today from this surah even though it talks about an event that happened even before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born so now i am going to read this surah with you i have already recited this when i started the lesson but now i am going to recite it two more times once i will recite it and i want you to recite after me if you already know the surah that's great then you can just recite without reading if you don't remember the surah then what you can do is 
listen to me and then read after me. So I'll go ayat by ayat and you can repeat after me. So we'll do this once. And then the second time I'll go through the surah and I will help you understand each word in the surah. All right. So are you ready? Let's do the first recitation. A'udhu billahi minash rajim Okay. So repeat after me. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel. Yeah, please repeat. Okay, very good. Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. All right, very good. Wa arsala alayhim tayran ababil. All right, repeat after me. Tarmihim bi hijaratim min sijjil. Good. فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَأَسْفِمْ مَأْكُولٌ Excellent. So hopefully you repeated after me. Now what I'm going to do is take each part and explain the meaning so that when you recite this in your Salat or, or at any other time, you can also try and think about the meaning when you say this Surah. And that's actually very important when you are praying you should think about what you are saying. Just like when we were covering Surah Fatiha earlier, we learned the meaning. So when we recite Surah Fatiha, we should think about the meaning. Similarly, when we recite any Surah, we should be thinking about what we are saying. And that makes our Salat more powerful and it also improves our connection with Allah. Because when we are talking to somebody, it's important to know what we are saying. Okay, so let's now go over the meaning. Auzu means I seek refuge or I seek protection. Billahi means with Allah. So A'uzu Billahi means I seek refuge with Allah. Min ash rajim Min is from and then ash rajim means the accursed shaitan. And hopefully you remember we've already talked about the meaning of A'uzu Billahi Min ash rajim before. We have said that anytime we recite the Quran, we should always first say A'uzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Then Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and hopefully you remember the meaning of this also. And please tell me the meaning. Excellent, very good. I hope you remember it. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Then Alam Tara. So Alam means have you not seen? Now Allah is talking to the Prophet وسلم, have you not seen? And through the Prophet he's also talking to the people of Makkah because they had actually seen the army of Abraha coming and what happened to them. So when this surah was revealed there were many people who were still alive who actually had witnessed this event. So Alam Tara means have you not seen? Kaifa, Kaifa means how? So some of you who speak a little bit of Arabic, you might have heard Kaifa Haluka, how are you? So Kaifa means how? Fa'ala, so Fa'ala means what he did. Rabbuka, your Lord. Therefore, Kaifa Fa'ala Rabbuka means how your Lord did or how your Lord dealt with. Be Ashab al-Feel, so be is with Ashab al-Feel as we've talked about before means what? Do you remember? Ashab al-Feel, Ashab al-Feel means the people of the elephant. So feel means elephant, Ashab is people. So Ashab al-Feel is people of the elephant. Very good. So as we do this together, I want you to try and remember what these words and phrases mean. Then we have Alam Yaj'al. So, a lam is a question and then lam yaj'al, did he not, so a lam is did he not, yaj'al make, a lam yaj'al means did he not make, kaidahum, so kaida is a, a plan or a scheme, so kaidahum means their plan or their scheme, fi tadlil, fi is in and tadlil means to go astray. Therefore, this whole ayat, Alam Yaj Al Kaidahum Fi Tadlil means, did he not make their plan go astray? Then, wa means and, arsala. Arsala means he sent. It has the same root as Rusul. So, Rusul is a messenger who sent. Arsala means he sent. Wa arsala and he sent. Alayhim is on them or against them. Who are the them over here? The them is talking about whom? 
think about it you're right talking about the people of the elephant so did he not send against them tayran ababil tayr means bird and ababil means flocks so flocks of birds so flying birds that came in in flocks tarmi him tarmi him means hit them bi hijaratin min sajil b is with hijarat hijaratin min sajil so hijara means stone and min sajil means of baked clay so the full translation of this ayat would be which hit them with stones of baked clay and then the last ayat faja ala hum fa means and so ja ala hum means made them ka asfim maqul like eaten up chaff so chaff is something that animals eat so it is something that surrounds grain like uh, for example if we have different kinds of grain like corn and so on the stuff that surrounds them is chaff we human beings don't eat it but animals eat the chaff and they eat some and then they spit out some so it then gets all scattered on the ground so allah is saying that he made the people of the elephant like eaten up chaff so that's a very scary thought So this is the full surah and I hope now that you will try and remember not only the surah but also the meaning of the surah. Now what we are going to do is take each ayat and again look at the meaning of each ayat and then we look at the details or the detailed explanation for each of these ayats. The first ayat is Alam tara kaifa fa ala rabbuka bi ashab al fil O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this is implied. The have you not seen could also be towards the people who were living at the time and and who had seen this event. So have you not seen how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? We've already talked about the people of the elephant. Hopefully you remember. Abraha and his army, which had many elephants in it. So when Allah talks about the people of the elephant. Allah is talking about Abraha and his army and they are called people of the elephant because this army had many elephants in it and if you remember from last time the people of Makkah in fact the people of Arabia were not used to elephants so when they thought about those people and they saw these elephants as part of the army they were very surprised and then they would refer to that army as the people of the elephant who was Abraha do you remember So very good. So Abraha was the governor of Yemen, and if you look at the map of Arabia, Yemen is to the south of Makkah. So Abraha was the governor of Yemen. Who appointed Abraha? Do you remember? Abraha was appointed by the king of Abyssinia. And what did Abraha do? He went to attack the Holy Kaaba with an army, and this army also had some elephants in it. Okay next ayat Alam yaj'al kaidahum fi tadlil Did he not make their plan go astray Okay so alam yaj'al kaidahum fi tadlil what does this mean Try to repeat Did he not make their plan go astray So what was the plan Their plan was to destroy the holy Kaaba Ma'azallah So do you remember what Ma'azallah means Ma'azallah means God forbid. When do we say this? Do you remember? We say this whenever we say something that is bad or something that should not happen or we don't want it to happen, we say Ma'azallah which means God forbid. All right. So what were the objectives of Abraha? Do you remember from last time? His aim was not to get religious benefit but rather he wanted to get all the economic, social and political benefits that the Quraysh had because of the holy Kaaba so i hope you remember from the story because of the holy Kaaba people from all over arabia and north of arabia would come to the holy Kaaba and it became a center of trade and because of that the Quraysh had a very high status and they were also very well off economically and they were also respected because of the Kaaba so what abraha wanted 
He wanted to get all those benefits, the benefits that Quraysh had because of the Kaaba. They had economic benefits, they had social status, people respected them. So Abraha wanted to get those benefits and that's why he wanted to destroy the Kaaba. He thought that if he destroyed the Kaaba, then people will come to Yemen, which is where he was from, and then he will start getting all those benefits. So what was the secret plan of the people of the elephant? by destroying the holy Kaaba, annihilating the Quraysh and terrifying the people of Arabia, they, in other words, the people of the elephant, Abraha and his army, they actually wanted to get hold of the trade route that went from the south of Arabia to Syria and Egypt. So remember I was telling you that there was this trade route that connected the south of Arabia, which is where Yemen is, all the way up to Syria, which is north of Arabia, and Egypt, which is also north of Arabia and a little bit to the west. So what Abraha and his army wanted was to capture the trade route, but they kept this motive hidden and showed that they wanted to take revenge for the desecration of their church by the Arabs by destroying their holy place of worship, Ma'azallah. If you remember from our last class that there was this person from Arabia who had gone down to Yemen and he had uh, spread filth in one of the churches in Yemen and Abraha and his army were using that as an excuse to come and destroy the Kaaba. But as we know, he had a much larger purpose. So now let's look at how Allah dealt with the plan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not let them succeed and made their plan fail. So the plan that they had to come and destroy the Kaaba and take over, Allah did not let that plan succeed. So what are some practical lessons that we learn from this? Number one, idols and false gods did not have anything to do with making the plan of the people of the elephant fail. Again, if you remember the story, what did Hazrat Abdul Mutlib do? So this, so Hazrat Abdul Mutlib was the grandfather of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He prayed to Allah. He did not pray to any of the idols. The idols could not do anything. So he prayed to Allah to protect the house, to protect the Kaaba. And Allah is the one who protected, not any of the false idols that had been created. So that's the first point. The second point is that this proves that Tawheed, which is the oneness of Allah, towards which the Holy Prophet ﷺ was inviting, is the truth and idol worship, which the pagans of Makkah were indulged in, is totally false. So this was a point that was being made to the Kuffar of Makkah through this ayah. So among many other points, this was a point that was being made then and this is a point that is still relevant. Then ayat number 3. And he sent against them flying birds in flocks. So the word Ababil, it is not the name of a bird. So some people think that Ababil here is a reference to a particular bird, but that's not true. In this context, it means flocks of birds, so huge flocks of birds. And these were the armies of birds against the army of elephants. So we had the Ashab al-Fil, a huge army with elephants, but Allah's army was made up of small little birds. Tarmihim bihijaratim min sijil which hit them with stones of baked clay. So flocks of birds, let's talk about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent flocks of birds to destroy Abraha's army. When Abraha's army reached near the valley of Muhassar, which is near the Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent flocks of birds to destroy the army. These birds had small stones the size of a chickpea or lentil in their beaks and claws. So we can also say that these small stones were like the size of small bullets. 
What was the fate of the people of the elephant? The fate of the people of the elephant was miserable. Whoever the stones hit, his body melted, his flesh fell off and he finally died. Abraha himself met the same fate by the time he reached Sana. So you might remember that Abraha didn't die over there. So he was injured, he started traveling back and when did he die? He died when he got close to his own city. So this way the people of Sana, which is the major city in Yemen, they could actually see what happened to their leader and that became sort of something that stuck in their heads and it made them afraid of what happened. His condition became worse, his chest burst open, his heart fell out and he died and basically he became an example for times to come. Sijil. So what does Sijil mean? Sijil means small clay stones which get baked and hardened under the sun. That is sharp stones that have clay mixed in them. Fajalahum kasfim ma'akul. This is the last ayat. So he made them like eaten up chaff. So overall their situation was pretty sad. So they in the end were like eaten up chaff all spread in the area where they were attacked. So they were completely destroyed. So the meaning of eaten up chaff, their body parts were scattered here and there just like eaten up chaff. So now uh, let's just talk about a few points. One point that I find very interesting is that in this surah, if we think about it, there are some aspects of modern day warfare that obviously the people of that time had never thought about. So if we think about an air force, these little birds were like Allah's air force. So they were attacking from above and then the little stones that they threw, those stones were like small guided missiles. So these little guided missiles are like heat seeking missiles that went and hit exactly the target. So in modern day warfare, this is what happens. So you can have planes, they drop bombs or sometimes they drop missiles and those missiles go and hit exactly their target. And that is what the army of Allah did. And nobody had even thought of this at that time. But in modern day warfare, the same idea is used. So if you think about it, this is quite fascinating. Now let's look at some other practical aspects. So the fate of the people of the Ashabe field, so the people of the elephant, what was their fate? So this is the fate of oppressors and evil people who rebel against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, transgress the limits of worship and stand up against him. So people who stand up against Allah, fight against Allah, who attack Allah's house, this is what eventually happens to them. So it is something to be very scared of. It also shows us that no one knows the armies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except him. He may use anyone to serve his cause, even seemingly weak creatures. Just like he destroyed the powerful army of elephants with small stones through small birds. So Allah's army consisted of small birds that were throwing these small stones which were like missiles and these small missiles or stones were destroying a huge army. We as his servants should act as servants and stay humble in front of our creator and master. Okay, now some words of knowledge and wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that the holy Kaaba is his house and it is he who protected it. So nobody other than Allah protected the Kaaba. Likewise, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Allah's messenger and it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will protect him and make him successful. So when this surah was revealed, the Holy Prophet ﷺ was preaching in Makkah and there were very few people with him. And this surah is not only telling the Prophet ﷺ that Allah will protect him, it's also telling all others who were acting against the Prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect his Prophet ﷺ just the way Allah protected his house, the Kaaba. So now let's 
go over some points that we should remember from this surah. One important point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the greatest power and the highest authority. He protects his house and his deen himself. So this is the point to remember from ayat number one. Number two, those who plot against the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should fear his punishment. So just as the people of the elephant were punished for attacking the Kaaba, similarly people who attack Allah's deen will also be punished. Then the third point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let the enemies of his deen succeed. So the enemies of Allah will eventually be punished. So point number four, through seemingly weak creatures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys those who are proud of their strength and reduces their pride to dust. So this is from ayat 3 and 4. If you remember, Abraha was very proud and he thought that he could come and destroy the Kaaba. But Allah does not like people who are proud and they are eventually destroyed. Point number 5. We should not be frightened of the strength of Allah's enemies. We must put our trust in Allah because he is the true and real helper who always helps. So this is the key message from ayat number five that ultimately the helper is Allah. So Allah is the biggest of helpers, the best of helpers and we should always put our trust in Allah. So that is it for this surah. Hopefully you've understood the meaning and also the explanation hopefully was of benefit to you. Now I want you to try and remember this surah and every time you pray you should think of the meaning and think of how powerful Allah is and the fact that whenever we have difficulties Allah will always help us. So that is it. Inshallah I will see you in the next class. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.